Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Welcome to uh, geometry, arithmetic, and uh, differential equations of period seminar. Today, uh, uh, it's a great honor to have uh, Joseph Ayub, uh, who is going to talk about the new whale cohomology and the ring of periodic periods. Okay. Uh, just... Yeah. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. It's a pleasure uh, to give this talk. In, in so I, I gave the title at some point, but um, but now I'm not really very sure that I will be uh, very much speaking about this this new veil cohomology. So I will probably spend most of the lectures uh, speaking about periods and periodic periods, uh, which is maybe which, which somehow requires less um, preparation in some sense. Uh, so I guess it's maybe more suitable for for, for this seminar. Uh, uh, so I want to start uh, with uh, maybe recalling the um, the complex uh, uh, the complex story of periods. So which you probably well, which is probably well known. Uh, so uh, yeah, complex uh, maybe uh, periods. And so this is uh, yeah maybe after uh, Kontsevich. In particular, but also other maybe sources. Okay, so this is a well-known story. So let me somehow remind you how one get periods, which are these complex numbers, um, uh, uh, from from a geometric uh, situation, from geometry. So uh, yeah, so recall. How uh, somehow uh, how periods arise? Uh, by the way, I'm not I'm not hearing anything anymore. Is this normal? Are you hearing me? Yeah, it's normal. The, the microphone. Okay, okay. Off, that's perfect. Right. So arise in algebraic geometry. So you yeah one start with essentially uh, with three objects, namely uh, x uh, an algebraic variety. Uh, which is defined over Q, so uh, yeah. uh, with a closed uh, closed sub subset or sub scheme or sub variety, also defined over Q. So everything is over Q here, meaning that the, the equations have rational coefficients. Uh, then we uh, also need. Uh, 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 the Ram cohomology class, or really, uh, was usually called relative to Ram cohomology class. Uh, uh, that is some some omega, which lives in the let's say in, in the H n, so degree n cohomology of uh, the pair x z. So. Right, this, this is maybe uh, should say here. So this is uh, a Q vector space, a finite dimensional Q vector space, finite dimensional Q vector space. Um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, so it's it's very simple to define in the case where, where for example, X is uh, affine and smooth. You just look at the as a Durham uh, complex, uh, algebraic Durham complex of X, and then you uh, take the global section, and then you look at the cohomology of this uh, complex, and these are the Durham complex. And then there is a way to extend this uh, for singular, not necessarily affine, and even for pairs. And the third, um, uh, third ingredient that you need is uh, a similar object, but in a different cohomology series. So this is a relative Betty. And uh, so, since I took cohomology, now I will take actually homology. So it will be a homology class. Um, so and let's call this uh, by gamma. Uh, and this is in H Betty, same degree uh, of the pair. And this is uh, also uh, it's a Q vector space, and it's by definition this is the singular cohomology, singular homology of uh, the the c valued points so this man, the associated manifold or 
complex space to X and similar use. And this is the usual um, singular uh, homology. And this is also, as before, it's a Q vector, it's a finite dimensional Q vector space. Finite dimensional Q vector space. All right, and so once we have these these things, then, then we can we get a number from from the situation. So then uh, one gets complex number. Uh, which yeah, one can write it as uh, a pairing. So it's uh, uh, pairing uh, omega with um, sorry sorry uh, gamma with omega. So this is a complex number. And uh, so just by applying uh, the perfect pairing between homology and cohomology. Um, so here one has, uh, one can, yeah, go from HPN, tensor, H and the RAM, and to complex numbers. So this is, uh, so this really uh, maybe relies on, uh, on the, the Grothendieck comparison theorem between uh, singular cohomology and the, uh, and the ramp cohomology. So th these two vector spaces, when you extend them to to C, then they become really canonically uh, in duality. And then, so you can particularly have a pairing like this, and then you just, you take your, your gamma, you take your omega here, and then this give you this number, which is, by the way, sometimes called uh, written with a sign of an integral because it is really some kind of an integral. Uh, it's an it's integral of omega uh, over the somehow the, the chain uh, gamma. Okay, so this is how periods arise in algebraic geometry. A any question about this? Are you still here? Just I'm, I'm a bit worried because I, I really don't hear anything. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, perfect. J just, just to be sure because, uh, you know, it's <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm just, uh, Okay, so th th this is somehow, uh, yeah, how periods arise. And then there is this uh, famous conjecture of uh, conservation Zagi. So conjecture of conservation Zagi, uh, which simply, uh, or in, in rough uh, terms would say the following, that, uh, that all the Q rational or Q linear, or Q linear relations among th these numbers in these periods can be explained uh, by geometry. So, and, and in fact, yeah, they really make a very precise statement here. So uh, they, gave, they gave a list of maybe three or four, I don't remember, uh, uh, relations that are somehow somehow obvious that one, uh, one, one, one always have some, some kind of universal relation. And they, they uh, conjectured that these relation will generate all the possible relation between these complex numbers. Um, all right, so and this is, uh, it's really a conjecture in transcendence degree, it's transcendence, sorry, uh, theory. Um, um, yeah, so it, it, it has a lot of consequences about, uh, uh, and so it, it tells you a lot, lot of things about what, when a family of numbers uh, are uh, independent, uh, are algebraically independent and so or, or not. Um, uh, so could I ask yes. a question? Of course. So, well, uh, here what you say, Q linear relations would also make, I mean, can we just say Q algebra construction? So like multiplication. Can, yeah, I mean, the point is that these numbers, they are, so if you take two such numbers and then then then, then you multiply them, you get mm -hmm. the number of, this, of a similar kind. Okay, so, so the addition is the only problem, so to speak. Yes, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so if you know all the Q, Q, Q linear relations, you also know all the uh, algebraic relations. Mm. Yeah, and it's kind of simpler to just, uh, I mean, or for the conjecture at least, it's simpler to say what are the what are the expected Q linear relations. And can can you also do the same with addition? I mean, absorb 
Q-linear uh, coefficients into the topological cycles. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's, it's only yes. about really adding, adding, uh, adding things. Yeah, adding. Adding. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, mm. yeah. Okay. So in fact, I mean, the, the, this pairing is bilinear in uh, in gamma and omega, right? So it's uh, hmm. this, is, and this is one one of the this is one of the of the um, of, of the axiom or. Uh, I see. No, no, it's just, yeah. Okay. Go on, go on. No, I was just wondering maybe if addition can also be absorbed, then it is just is it just about equality, perhaps? No. Yeah. No, you cannot uh, you cannot absorb addition because you see it's bilinear. So if you, I mean, I don't know how mm. to write mm. gamma mm. omega plus gamma prime omega prime. Ah, I would thanks. not do this if, if gamma is equal to gamma prime, but otherwise, okay. yeah. Uh, you see, this is uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um. All right, so maybe I, I just, yeah, maybe give, uh, maybe, yeah, I, I could give maybe at least two of these, I mean, the most two important ones, I guess, um, that, that, that somehow give you a relation between periods is, is, is the following. So if you have uh, a morphism of pairs, let's say from two algebraic varieties, so, so from, from X prime to X, that sends Z prime uh, uh, inside Z, um, then you 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 want something like this. So you want that the pairing. So you you, you take a, a, you take a gamma prime. So and, and omega. So gamma prime is a would be a, a homology class for x prime, and omega will be the Ram homology class for x. And then you could pair the push forward. Remember, this is homology, so it's it's covariant uh, of gamma prime with omega. Or you could pair uh, gamma prime with the pullback of omega, and then, then you want these two. Uh, yeah, I mean, these will be always equal, right? It's, uh, uh, and, and this would, would be one one of the relations. And the other one is uh, maybe so-called Stokes Stokes formula. Maybe I will not say explicitly, but it's yeah, it's somehow it's also explained by by Stokes theorem or integration. All right. So, so these essentially are the relation and they are like the obvious one and then they conjecture that there are, there's no other ones in some sense okay so this is uh, yeah this is somehow uh, taken maybe directly from the paper of Consul Zagier uh, um, there, it turns out that there's actually a way to um, to present uh, periods in a, uh, using less generators and less relations, uh, and so it's a theorem that that, that you that, that that you get equivalent uh, somehow uh, theories. And maybe I, I want to to say to 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 to, to tell this also. So um, here's maybe maybe a remark. So there is a, there is another there is a, a way um, to present. Um, maybe before, let, let me introduce one, one thing here. So, uh, before saying this remark, I want to make it maybe, maybe def oops, definition. So, uh, one one can define the the ring of uh, so-called abstract periods uh, by um by taking uh, the generators uh, so the, the, these uh, gamma omega uh, and, and think uh, thinking about them as really as symbols uh, plus the, the, the geometric relation okay so um So, uh, so this ring, uh, let's give it, give a name to it. Um, just maybe given by uh, by the, the generators and the and the multiplication uh, is denoted by. So it's just it's convenient to to introduce this ring. Uh, right, so 
th there is this conjecture which say that, 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 that there are only uh, these obvious relations between periods. It's, it's a very out of reach somehow thing to, uh, and so what, what, what one can do is just introduce uh, an abstract uh, ring uh, where somehow this uh, conjecture is by design uh, true, then one, ha one has, of course, uh, there is a map to to the complex number, uh, and uh, it is conjectured that this map is injective, uh, but but this is something that is probably, um, yeah, it's very difficult to prove, so, right. Okay, so what I wanted to say here, that there is a, there is a, there is a, a, a more, uh, so there is a way to present the same, um, the same ring, with less, less generators in relation. Okay, so, uh, and I, I want to tell you somehow uh, what, are the, what are the generators and what are the relations. So the generators are uh, as follows. So you, uh, so they are essentially given by, by some class of functions. Um, so, so I write them um, f between brackets, where f is uh, some um, some function, uh, or, or maybe some power series in in some number of variables uh, n. But it could be, I mean, the, n is not fixed, so it's any. You can allow any number of variables, uh, which are convergent. So, which are uh, convergent in the in the neighbor in the neighborhood of the neighborhood of the unit polydisc, right? So, this is um, the set of uh, complex numbers uh, with which are. Uh, with norm less than one, uh, and the the most important property maybe is that uh, and f is algebraic, and one way to say what is what it means to be algebraic is to say that it's algebraic on on the field of rational functions uh, with with these variables. Okay, so it's it's a function. It's uh, it's a holomorphic function. Uh, which converge on on on, uh, on the on the unit polydisc and where uh, and which has which satisfies um, which is a zero of some polynomial uh, with coefficient in these rational functions. These are these are the generators, and then the relations are. And maybe I should say uh, the geometric relation, maybe. Geometric. So these are the analogs of the relation that that are that appear in the in the contrivage Zagi conjecture. So, and again, there is only one relation, and this is uh, very it's very simple. It's it's a Stokes type relation. So it's, it's a Stokes uh, type relation. So you, you take a, a function as before, and you you take a derivative with respect to one of the variables. So you have to fix uh, so f i are fixed here. F as, as before, and then you you you, you subtract uh, to this the evaluation of f at one at the i equal one. Maybe I should not have like this. Minus evaluation at zero. Okay, so these are the relations, and, and it's easy to see why these relations are are there because one thing about so so this gives so this gives. The same uh, ring, and uh, one can say also what is the map to see. It's the map that sends uh, f to its integral on the on the on the cube. Uh, so n should be big enough so that so it covers all the all the variables. And, and of course, if 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 you take uh, a function of this form. And you, you 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 integrate it, and you get zero. Okay, so this is why this relation is is here. 
Okay, so this is somehow uh, what I wanted to say about, uh, I guess, about the um, about the classical or, or the complex uh, the complex periods. Any question about this before I move to the um, to the periodic uh, periods? No, it seems okay yeah, for me. Okay, correct. All right, so a periodic version of this. Okay. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, the, the question that I would like to address uh, is the following. Uh, so, in fact, it's maybe a series of questions. So, first one is, is how to construct interesting. Uh, periodic numbers right so uh, element in QP uh, from algebraic geometry uh, yeah maybe just one question be, uh, before so yeah. this 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 last map that you defined uh, from PKZ it was the PKZ defined in this with this, no, so this maybe, yeah maybe let's call it uh, second one yeah <laughs> And, and the injectivity here is uh, it's equivalent to the it's equivalent to the to the to the conjecture of conservation Zagier. Uh, just e even in this context of just formal of uh, this convergent series. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. So, so it's really it's the same ring. So this is why I didn't I, I wrote it in, in the, exactly the same with the same notation. It's it's it, this guy here is isomorphic. This guy here, the the one I, I defined here is exactly the one that is um, that is in this definition. I guess. It's it's a theorem that that, that these so that that, that these uh, these generators and the relation that they, that are, are okay. given to us by Consuelo give you this exactly the same ring as the one mm, mm. using this and this, okay, and of course secretly here we, we think about f as a differential form. It's really it's just uh, you know it's because we have. Uh, it's a it's a top it's a top differential form uh, on some manifold, and so since that is, since there is some uh, a canonical one the dz one up to dz n, just it's enough to give uh, just a function, right? Okay. Um, right. So how, so I somehow I kind of told you. How to construct interesting numbers, interesting complex numbers, uh, using algebraic geometry, and of course, it's a natural question maybe to to say or to ask how to construct uh, an interesting class of periodic numbers, uh, yeah, using, using a similar uh, similar procedure or re recipe. Uh, okay, and then um, so uh, also uh, is there a way? Is there uh, uh, to uh, or is that, is that a simple presentation as before? Is that a simple presentation as before? So, namely, using just uh, algebraic, some kind of algebraic functions and some simple relations, uh, and maybe the most importantly, what, what would be the significance of these uh, periods? Um, what is significance of uh, these, or maybe the, uh, rather of the of the ring of of petty periods of, of such a ring of such of periodic periods? Okay, so maybe b b before uh, going on here, I should say one thing. Uh, right, so uh, it, it was funny to read on, on, on the website of the seminar, the citation of uh, of Poincaré, I guess, um, yeah, about about, about, this, about the name periods and uh, maybe the confusion that, that, uh, that it, 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 it's causing. And uh, I'm afraid that I, I have to say that uh, what I will maybe be saying here is, is of somehow increasing this 
uh, or, or maybe adding uh, adding to this uh, confusion uh, somehow, because there is uh, there is there is something uh, uh, which is classical now in Pedic Hodge theory, which is called the maybe the ring of Pedic periods that, that was introduced by by Fontaine, and uh, and what I would be saying here is really has really a, uh, or at least, uh, as far as I can see, has uh, very very little to do with these kind of uh, of periods. So, so uh, the reason I'm calling these periodic periods is is is, is uh, precisely because it's um, because of the analogy with the complex story I just uh, I just told. And um, yeah, uh, it would be of course interesting to find maybe some some links with. Uh, Periodic court theory and and uh, Fontaine's Fontaine's rings of periods, of periodic periods, but uh, yeah, it's and I think there should be some kind of, of a link, but maybe one has to extend the class of of periods I'm I'm considering in this talk. Anyway, uh, all right, so uh, yeah, so I, I want I want to to try to answer these kind of questions, um, and the reminder of the talk. So. Uh, First, yes, that there is indeed a way to construct some numbers uh, from algebraic geometry, which is very similar to uh, to the construction I gave before. So using uh, maybe pairs of algebraic varieties uh, and uh, and the Durand homology class and some kind of uh, petty homology class um, and produce some uh, some numbers in QP, which one, which then I would somehow would like to call periodic periods. And then I will also tell you how how you could describe this ring, the ring of abstract periodic periods, in a in a simple way. And then I also would try want to try to tell you how this ring arises in in nature. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let, let, let us first try to to mimic them what, what what we did uh, what I did before uh, um, and see. Uh, what, what we have to do. So, so of course, um, uh, yeah. So one could try the following. One could try to um, to produce uh, numbers, periodic numbers, as follow. So again, I, I want to start with a with a variety X, which is defined over Q. So Q variety, and also maybe pick some closed subset in Q. Um, and then I would like to take maybe a Durham cohomology class as before. Um, And then I would like to take some kind of uh, uh, Betty homology class. I would like something a gamma, which looks like a singular chain. Uh, but here, of course, uh, so in the case of complex numbers, uh, we, we are looking at the associated complex space. And then the, and we, we, we took the, our chain in, in the, there, and this was, uh, yeah, it worked somehow. Uh, here, since I am, I'm in the periodic case, uh, one would maybe expect to, to take the singular chain uh, in maybe the periodic manifold associated to, uh, to X, let's see. In, in maybe periodic manifold. I don't know maybe how to write it. I should, I should not write it XQP because I really want to think about it as a, as a, as a rigid analytic space. So maybe let's write it like this X analytic QP. Okay. So this is, uh, yeah. Or maybe even maybe the, the pair of. Right. So this is somehow what we would like to. So this is somehow this would be the analog of what we did before. And then the question is, uh, can one define? Can one define some kind of uh, pairing? Uh, gamma omega. 
YouTube. Okay. So, but for, for, to answer this question, we're gonna really has to somehow make make this uh, precise here. Um, well, um, so the, the, there are, in fact, maybe there are, there are at least it, one could argue that maybe the, the most natural thing to do here would be to to maybe look at the the, the Berkovich space associated to X. And so this is some kind some kind of a nice uh, topological space. Uh, and in fact, even its homology its homology is has has, a, has some has some nice meaning, uh, uh, some nice arithmetic meaning actually. Uh, and so what, what could uh, but could maybe try to work with that. So maybe first guess. So um, maybe uh, uh, take a uh, singular chain in uh, really in the Berkowitz space. associated to X, maybe even to, let's call it X. So, I mean, th th there is a notion of, uh, I mean, that are actually, now this, uh, they have different maybe names. So, so uh, one could speak about the addict space as, 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 um, associated to X over QP, and then to the, to the addict space, you can you can look, can associate the Berkowitz space. You can also look at the, well, can, uh, this is also sometimes called the, the the the, the, the the rigid analytic space to x and so on so so all this for us actually the same uh yeah maybe you don't know what is the vector space but this is not really very important for for, for later on uh anyway so the, there is this is what would be a natural guess uh, uh unfortunately I, I don't know how to how to make how, how to define uh such a pairing uh in that case um, and so the the, uh, the thing that that works is the following. So second guess. So maybe just uh, uh, the, this uh, this singular chains are are constructed by C infinity maps in this case also. Or... No, I mean uh, no, I wouldn't. No, I mean this but, is. Uh, I think the the backward space is is really just uh, a top of. I mean, for example, if 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 X is the curve, uh, this is like like a big uh, tree. I mean, it's an infinite. Three somehow, so it's it's really one dimensional, um, and it doesn't it doesn't have. I mean, as far as I know, there, there is there is no good notion of C infinity structure. I see. In these okay. kind of spaces. So it's uh, yeah. I, I just I would like to consider to consider this as a topological space. And in fact, the it turns out that the homology of I mean, as a space, it's really. Uh, I mean, some people look, some people consider consider it to be a nice space. I am not really sure uh, if I want to. I mean, it's it's still a very uh, kind of uh, uh, wide space in some sense. So, uh, uh, and but it is. I mean, the, the nice thing about it is that it is uh, path connected, for example. And so it, it makes really sense to speak about to, to speak about singular homology there. But in fact, it turns out that the singular homology of this very complicated space is, is rather simple somehow and it, it can be computed uh, using uh, for example um, using weight in etalco homology so it, it's, it corresponds to weight to the weight zero part in in etalco homology in some sense so it, it's not it, it's a rather uh, well understood uh, space i think this uh, and for for instance for example if if your variety has good reduction uh, then this Berkowitz paper will be kind of contractible, and the the homology the homology will be trivial. So it's it's really it's something that you can read somehow. Uh, you can read from the degeneration of your uh, of your of drag variety, in some sense. Anyway, so yeah, um, but but this is uh, some somehow uh, at least I I don't know how to how to use chain there to to somehow to produce numbers. Uh, a second case is. Is the following? Uh, instead of taking singular chain, one one take uh, somehow um, one use uh, something called the Suslin uh, homology. So uh, let's 
use the syslin. Homology of x and ready of the analytic x over qp. Okay, so this 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 is what what will work in fact for us. Um, so I, I I spent some time maybe to 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 remind you about uh, Susli homology, uh, or at, or I maybe tell you, I don't know maybe for the first time for some of you. Um, so Susli homology was, was invented. Uh, in the case uh, by, by Suslin, uh, in the case of algebraic varieties, uh, and so here I'm, I'm using this the same idea somehow, but for um, analytic varieties over QP. Okay, so what is the Suslin homology? So uh, the idea is very simple, in fact. So uh, uh, so it's uh, Suslin homology. Uh, is the homology of a chain complex, maybe Cauchy, I don't know, uh, um, where the, the usual topological simplices So what is what people call delta n? Maybe maybe put it topologically to so it would be considering a version of that. So this is the uh, the set. Okay, so this is uh, t zero up to t n, maybe in zero one n plus one plus the relation that is some is t i is equal to the one 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 two. Uh, so, so this is if you remember how one defines singular homology, you, you look at these uh, simplices, then you start mapping them into your space, and then you produce out of this uh, maybe first a simplicial object, and then you look at the associated uh, simplicial group just by taking linear combination of these maps, and then you you get a complex out of this. You, the homology of this complex is the singular homology. So, so they had the idea that instead of taking these simplices, so in, in an algebraic situation where we don't have these simplices, we could just replace these simplices by their uh, algebraic version. Okay, so um, the simplices are replaced by by their algebraic version. So. In algebraic geometry, then Susin consider the these uh, spaces. Maybe I put uh, okay, it's, it's over over some field K, uh, and what 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 this is is simply the spectrum. So you, you do the same thing as in usual topology, except that that you don't you, can, you cannot now say that you want your uh, TIs to be between zero and one because there is no inequality. So somehow you, you remove this condition, but otherwise you keep the other one. So this will be really the spectrum. Of this, of the following algebra, you look at the um, polynomial algebra in n plus one variable, and then you mod out by the relation equal to one. Of course, this is just isomorphic, non-canonically to the affine space. Okay, but um, when I write this like this, then then it's, there is an evident somehow notion of a phase and and so on, and, and then you can. And then you start mapping this this simple space to your algebraic variety, and then you you do as you do in topology. You you, you cook a complex of abelian groups out of this, and then it gives you some homology groups. Okay, so this is somehow what Suslin did with uh, with one one thing uh, one more complication maybe in the algebraic setting is that if you just look at maps uh, from from these affine spaces to to your variety, then there is uh, in general there is only very few such maps. Like for example, if, if you if you take a curve of genius bigger than than one, uh, any map from from a n will be constant to this curve, right? So it's it's not a very useful definition in general if you just look at maps. But what Suskin did really is that he was looking at at so-called finite correspondences. So um, okay, so uh, maybe I say moreover, Suskin considered uh, finite correspondences, meaning that you, he, he looked at these uh, spaces. He had this 
he had he had some variety x that he wanted to maybe define for it uh, some homology theory and then what he was doing he was looking at uh, correspondences so something like uh, t right so instead of taking a map directly to x he would first uh, replace delta n by some finite uh, cover and then map c to x so this is this would be a finite uh, finite subjective maybe with c reducible okay so, so, so just think of some kind of a of a multi, so this is really a multivariate function if you want from delta n k two to x and yeah out of this he somehow he constructed some complex and this is what now nowadays we call sustained homology and this is a homology that you get out of this construction and it should be said that this is um, it's it's extremely hard to compute this kind of uh, invariance and they are very much related to uh, to algebraic k theory and uh, what's also called uh, what's more what's also called motivic homology so so this is uh, somehow we are kind of this is very much related to to motives and so and so it, it's a theory which has a lot of uh, very good formal properties but it's extremely hard to compute all right so this is this is social homology and somehow one could mimic this construction uh, in the in the periodic world okay so Okay, so uh, let's see what I was saying here. Um, right, so I, I was trying to define, yeah, so, okay, so here's maybe, uh, how should I say this? Um, okay, so, yeah, so uh, maybe here's a fact. Yeah. So one can define uh, so in homology groups so I write them like this h sustain n of uh, x analytic maybe over q p over q p uh, by just by mim mimicking I don't know if this is correct but okay uh, suslin suslin construction suslin construction in the periodic context. So here, for those who, who, who know this, what I'm, re what I'm really doing here is that I'm, I'm working in the, uh, in the so-called context of rigid analytic geometry. Okay, so over QP, yeah. Uh, so and basically here, so the, the uh, so one uses, one uses the synthesis. Uh, These are q vector spaces. No? It's it's also a q vector space. Yeah. And is it uh, usually finite dimensional? Because it is, it is not. Uh, just just a moment. I, I would I, I wanted to comment also on this, but this is a q vector space. But uh, so the, the the question of finite dimensionality is a very. Uh, it's a very delicate question. Um, so in general, I mean, these kind of definition, you can make them um, uh, over any any base field, okay? Uh, and and they, they very much depend on the base on the base field. For example, if you if you if you do this construction over over the complex numbers, um, then Susan commodity even of of the point will be uh, will be of uh, of uncountable dimension. It will be very big. Uh, there are conjectures saying that if you are over uh, over a number field, uh, maybe in some degrees, maybe not maybe not in all degrees, these are supposed to be uh, uh, fine-dimensional q-vector spaces. But these, these are, I think, the only case we, uh, the only case we know this is the case of q or, or over of, 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 of a finite extension of q. So it's just the case of a point. Uh, and these are known by by the work of Borel by co by computation of some k theory groups. Um, uh, for a curve over over q for an ellipt an elliptic, I think there is no no example of an elliptic curve over q for which we we know the the finite dimensionality. I think um, uh, others, yeah. In, in this case, in the case of the periodics here, so the case I'm interested in, uh, it is essentially the same story. Uh, but here, 
the, the good thing is I think one expect these groups to be to be finite dimensional to, uh, these two vector spaces to be to be of finite rank uh, because one so there is there is a way to compute these kinds of groups using uh, Suslin homology of varieties over FP because FP turns out to be the residue field of QP. One, what, there is a way to uh, somehow to um, to express these groups in terms of similar groups. It, it's a complicated way to, to to do this, but there is like maybe if you want to think about it, like there's, there's a spectral sequence maybe that that somehow takes similar groups defined over FP and somehow converging to these groups and um, and so that for for varieties over FP, it is conjectured that you have fine dimensionality always. I think. This is a conjecture of Parshin, um, which yeah, I mean anyway. So it, conjecturally, yes, the answer is it's, it's, this is a fine dimensional vector space, but it is it is uh, far from. Uh, I mean, we know it in very 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 small cases, but not in general. All right. Any, any more question about this? Yeah, so I was saying that uh, one uses the following synthesis. But, um, so uh, maybe I so they are defined in, in, in the same way as before. So I call them delta n rigid, and there are these uh, adic spectra of uh, the same kind of thing. So you look at kp, here you look at uh, uh, conversion power series in the TI, TIs, and then you also mod out by the same relation. Okay, and so this is, I want to say this because I want to, I want to say that this is uh, isomorphic to what, what is called the Tate ball. Uh, of the machine. Okay, so before we had something which was isomorphic to the affine space here in the periodic case, we have something which is like a tape ball. So the, the point of the tape ball are really, uh, so you should think about it as something like uh, Z in QP, or maybe rather something, yeah, okay, with, with norm at P smaller than one, and this is taken to the power N, okay? Something like this. Okay, so so this is uh, what, what, uh, what turns out to be uh, a good substitute for what I want to, for, for, for the question I, I, I just asked of the singular uh, converse. So, okay, so here's a maybe theorem or proposition. Uh, so given some gamma in, in the ramp homology, and some gamma in Suslin homology, um, One can produce a number in QP, and this. So this is what I want. I would like to call the uh, the periodic periods uh, just by analogy with the complex uh, case. Um, right. So, and it turns out that that so that there is one could formulate the same conjecture as as. Uh, uh, the conjecture of conservation Zagier. Uh, one could say that, that all the possible relations that you get out of this number are the ones that is that are coming from geometry. And it turns out that, that you can also uh, prove an equivalent statement with with less generators and less relation. And so maybe I, I give this. Uh, okay, so here's also a remark. So similarly, one can maybe define a ring of abstract. So in the sense that, that we only put the relation that we we expect to, to have between these symbols. So uh, uh, ring of abstract periodic periods. Let's call it also P, maybe. Um, as 
in the, in the conservative Zagier case, case. And it turns out that this string has also a similar or, or has a simple description. So it has, it also has, also admit a simple description. So it's really very similar to the one I gave before. So what are the generators? So there are again some uh, classes of function f. Uh, but now here, f will be some some power series. Um, some power series in some number of variables, but now over qp. And you ask uh, convergence in uh, the unit uh, uh, the unit date pole so it's maybe just write it like this so in uh in t is t smaller so this this is the uh periodic absolute value of t and then you take to the power n convergence there and algebraicity so again it's over the, the rational uh, the field of rational functions so you want your function to satisfy some, some algebraic equation. These are the generator and exactly the same relation as before. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that it's it's. Um, so I mean, one could conjecture that 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 also these are the only relations. I mean, I, I don't know if it's. Uh, very reasonable conjecture, uh, but yeah, it's at least it's 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 also um, um, it's an open question to uh, even to know if it's reasonable. I think to that, that, that there, there's no more relation than than, than these ones. But in, in any case, if if you just look at the obvious relation that you get on this kind of uh, pairing, then then you then then they are equivalent somehow to to the relation that you get from the Stoke formula. All right, so maybe I set up a few minutes, I guess. I wanted to maybe to tell you uh, how this uh, ring, or how, yeah, how this ring here that I just introduced here, uh, how, how, the, how does this somehow come, um, come up in nature, okay? So this is, this is, uh, this would be about this uh, new, uh, Technologies here. Okay, so maybe I sh should start by recalling what is a vague homology theory, or at least I mean that there are many uh, maybe definition. Maybe they are all, all essentially equivalent. I just I'll give one. But all right, so uh, so let, let, let K be a field. And so it would be, in my case, I want to, so I am interested in the case where K is the finite field uh, with P elements. Okay, so here's the definition. So avail cohomology uh, over K with coefficient in a uh, in a ring and some ring a so usually people consider the cohomology with value with, with coefficient in, in, in some field of characteristic zero but uh, here I, I want to be a bit more general um, okay so what is what is this uh, is so the very cohomology over k this coefficient in ring a is a functor that goes from smooth varieties over K uh, to uh, the category of uh, DG A algebras. Right, so to, to every variety X, it will give you some complex, some complex, uh, uh, which of course you think, uh, so this complex will be computing the cohomology of X 
right? So uh, I give examples, but I mean, you can already say one example. So uh, for example, if, if K is C, you could uh, you could take singular cohomology. So this, so this gamma X will be maybe the singular chain complex, okay? Um, okay, so it's a function with some properties. Some properties. So I, I maybe I will not say all of them, but down not not so much. But maybe uh, here's some properties. So you want that uh, the case. So if you look at the base, so at the point spec k, you want this to be uh, just equivalent to your uh, to your ring a, right? You want uh, maybe also the same thing for the affine space over k. You want, for example, that p p one is the expected thing, so it's uh, a zero plus a two or minus two yeah, as, a, as a complex. Uh, and the most important property turned out to be the Kunit formula. This is the most, the most serious property in some sense. So, so this is derived, of course. Right. Okay, so this is, uh, these are the axioms and so no, no, that, that, that this last axiom, the current formula, uh, is very strong in some sense, and, uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to construct uh, bail commodity series. Uh, but but that we know examples of these. So examples, maybe the most famous example is uh, Eladic homology. It was constructed by Grothendieck, and it's cool. So. Um, uh, I mentioned singular cohomology or Betty cohomology. And of course, uh, the RAM cohomology. So these two are, are in, uh, in characteristic zero. So, so. Okay. This is uh, this also, uh, this is somehow any characteristic different from it. Maybe. Okay, so characteristic of K. All right. Okay, so, and maybe others. Uh, there are also other examples like uh, crystalline cohomology and so on. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, so, so here's a, a fact, or maybe a theorem, is that uh, there exists a, a vague cohomology theory on uh, maybe over FP. With coefficient in this funny ring I, I just introduced, the ring of abstract uh, periodic period. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, um, I mean, uh, even if it's just if it exists, it's still uh, not not empty somehow because uh, uh, all, all, all the classical veil commodity series that 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 are available that were available um, they have uh, they have coefficient in some huge field like like QP. So this is a, a field which is uh, for example it, which is a, a, a uncountable. So it's or, QL, QP, whereas this ring here is, is, a, is a countable ring, I should maybe mention. So, sorry. So this guy here is, it's a countable uh, Q algebra. So it's it's already, um, at, in, I mean, in set theoretical size, it's it's sm much smaller than, than all the coefficient field uh, that that are usually taken as coefficient for trivial commodity series. Uh, right, so I mean, uh, of course, in characteristic zero, we have a veil commodity series with coefficient in Q, this is a singular commodity, but this thing does not exist over FP. Over FP, 
we have essentially we have the elliptic commodity series and we have the crystalline and they, are, they all take values in big in big fields okay so but but furthermore i can say the following so moreover maybe I, I, so i i gave a name to this commodity theory which is which is yeah not not a good name because yeah i don't know i i've called this i've called it gamma new because it was um, a new one so yeah uh so but so let, let, let me call it like this again and so what we can say is that uh, so moreover gamma nu specializes to all the classical cohomology series namely there is uh, there are always so there, there are maps so I just maybe state the, the case of the elliptic ones so there are maps from gamma nu to ql uh, now I'm, I'm not sure anymore but it yeah, maybe one needs to go to QL bar, but anyway, I can think about it. Let's, to, to, to be just sure, let me go to QL, to QL bar. So there are such map such that when you, uh, when you, uh, sorry, it's, oh, sorry, this is not what to say. So you look at this, at, again, this funny ring and uh, such that when you tensor when you when you extend scalars to ql bar you get the usual uh, elliptic uh veil commodity theory and this is for all l okay all right so this is maybe the theorem and so the the, the reason why this is interesting is because there is a conjecture so maybe here uh, still have can I take one minute, maybe, or two minutes to, to finish? Yeah, okay. 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 So there's a, con there a famous conjecture called the independence of L, which, morally speaking, say that that, that, that all the veil cohomology series that, that we know, like all, all the elliptic cohomology series over, over example, over FP or, or any field of characteristic P, um, they are essentially uh, equivalent, so they are somehow isomorphic in some sense. Uh, and uh, right, so saying that, so roughly speaking, and say that the elliptic cohomology theory is isomorphic to the L prime elliptic cohomology. So this is, of course, it's this cannot cannot be true because uh, these two have different uh, coefficients. This is QL, this is QL prime, and QL and QL prime are not non-isomorphic fields and generally, but uh, to make this precise, you could could extend scalars to, and by the way, I, I should also here extend scalars to the bar. And so you, so the, the conjecture is, are these two commodity series are, uh, are, they, are they isomorphic? And we don't even know that they produce the same Betty numbers for them. So we don't even know that if you take a variety and you look uh, at the dimension of the uh, elliptic cohomology group of the first one or the second one, we don't know that they are the same. So it's, yeah. And so the, the reason why, so why, why this statement is interesting uh, with regard to this conjecture is that, so it, it gives you some, some ring, um, which somehow, which is somehow a base, um, which is some kind of uh, intersection in some sense of of all the coefficient fields that that we have, and um, and therefore you, you could then hope to to prove some some properties about this this algebra, which would somehow give you some result in the direction of this conjecture, right? So um, therefore, so so here's maybe a remark. One could hope that um, some ring theoretical properties so for example uh, example knowing that uh, p p addict is integral would be a good 
thing uh, uh, would have implication implications towards this conjecture okay so right so maybe i, I should i stop here <laughs> okay thank you very much thank you. Uh, any question? Uh, May I ask a question? Yes, of course. Thank you. It was a very interesting lecture. Thank you. Uh, the theorem of Konsevich and Zagier comes with a bag of examples. Uh, do you have any nice examples of such periodic periods as numbers? Uh, yeah, it's that's a very good question. So. <laughs> So, so the short answer is I haven't really tried to uh, to do any computations, um, but one could, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing is that this, uh, okay, so if, if you want to to use the definition I gave first, let's see, what, 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 I, what is it? So using the Suslin homology uh, groups, that this is quite hard because uh, it's very hard to produce elements in, this, in these groups. Uh, then, of course, you could then then you could try to do it with the other uh, description, which which is which has more uh, like more easily accept access uh, gen generators. Uh, just just taking a function. Uh, then then there you can make computation and then you could try to produce some. I mean, to be honest, I, I, I mean, okay, I, I know a few constants, a, a few complex constants that, that like, are like gamma, gamma values and so on, that there are sometimes periods, and this is like an interesting fact, but uh, I don't know any, any well-known uh, periodic number that, that I could try to see if it's, if it appears a period or, yeah, so no. I, I don't know really, I haven't done any computation, to be honest. Periodic zeta values. It would be interesting. All oh, right. So that, that is, that is kind of yeah. And then uh, there is a thing called Meyer measure, which is the period for uh, attached to a polynomial with rational coefficients. Okay, can you repeat what is the name of that? I didn't get Mahler measure. Mahler measure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an example in Konsevich Zagier. Uh, it's related to the hypersurface of zeros of polynomials, but not in a straightforward way. Uh -huh. And then there is a paper by uh, Denninger and Besser, which is called Piadic Mallet Measure. Uh -huh. And there they okay. try to give it uh, a Piadic meaning. And they uh -huh. have at least two attempts, maybe three, if I remember correctly. The uh -huh. first attempt looks like what you are proposing, but I have to look there again because they come up with the trivial answer. Like that these numbers are not interesting. There is a danger that the numbers are too simple, but your theorem tells us it's non-trivial anyway. Uh, so Yeah, I I mean, I, in which sense trivial? I don't know. I mean, you mean that, that, that all these numbers are like rationals or...? Uh, something like that. That I can say it's not the case, but yeah, I mean, that yeah. I think it's not the case, yeah. So but, yeah. In, in the case of Mahler measure, the triviality comes from the fact that you recover some expansion coefficients of a function which you already know or they are rational numbers after integration, something mm -hmm. like that. But then they do a more complicated thing with syntonic cohomology, syntonic regulators, and that seems more satisfactory. Mm -hmm. It seems related to your talk, but I, I don't see exactly how. Yeah. I mean, I, I could say maybe one thing, which I don't know if it's related, but it looks like, I mean, it just, it reminds me one, about this. So if you are, if you, I mean, okay, let, let me write it, sorry, uh, you go back. So uh, so you, you could, of course, try to to see, I mean, you, you have this integration map huh, from this, from this ring. Uh, to QP, and uh, you, you then so of course you have the, you have its its image here, um, and you could wonder what, if this image is interesting or is it just Q or is it stupid? I don't know. So uh, at, at, there is there is at least one meaning for this image, which is interesting. I think uh, this is like uh, you could 
this is like the smallest um, subfield where uh, I don't know, for example, crystalline cohomology Okay, so if you, for example, if you're interested in, in crystalline cohomology, then you know that there is like a small field in QP where all your crystalline cohomology group have, have the structure on this. You see that they, are, they can be defined over the small field. And this, this field cannot be, for, cannot, cannot be Q, for example, because we know that there is no weight cohomology series on Q. Right? So it, it should be big enough in some sense. And so there are, there are certainly some interesting numbers that are period in, in this sense. So, so I, I'm, this is why I, I am sure that, that you don't only get stupid uh, numbers from, from this construct. Uh, yeah, I, I can't tell you exactly. Uh, I, I can give. I cannot give you a, a nice example of uh, of, uh, like of of a well-known concept, but I should maybe try harder and and look at uh, this uh, paper of Denninger and and Besser. Uh, and Besser, yeah, Besser. Yeah, okay. but yeah. If, if I wanted to answer my question, like, is the period, are periodic zeta values periods in your sense? Yeah. What should they prove? Uh, can you show the definition again that they are integrals of uh, periodically convergent yeah, algebraic I mean, functions yeah. over over a cube, right? Yeah, I mean, but but not. I mean, I think. Uh, not, I mean, you could also just uh, uh, right. So this this would, this would be, of course, one way, but maybe this is not 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 the only way. Uh, uh, I mean, for example, in, in the case of the complex uh, data values, so I think that there are some these like iterated integrals, right? That they, they uh, uh, so I, I'm just saying that, it, that there might be some geometric, uh, some of the, 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 the more natural geometric situation, which produces numbers. You don't necessarily need to to be on a cube. You see, I mean, you, you could yeah. have. Uh, Maybe you could have an, a, a, a natural uh, class in social cohomology which appears to you with, without having, without needing to go to, to this cube situation. Um, yeah, it would be ideal if this was uh, in the definition itself. Like, right. so, I mean, yeah. what, what I would expect, so sorry, to, what I would expect is that maybe if if one looks back to, to, the, um, to the complex situation, maybe, I mean, because I know that in the complex situation there are, there are these kind of, um, uh, models uh, uh, using um, uh, this uh, product of so you look at the, at the product of maybe of p1 with itself many times and then there are these partial partial di diagonals that you and then somehow you, I think uh, this is this is the, the the model of the fundamental group that was maybe introduced by Bellinson uh, and there there are some natural cycles that you can use and I would expect that maybe these cycles they can be lifted to to sustain homology, and if this is the case, then maybe you know you get in this way you get a more natural uh, uh, more natural uh, way to to produce these data values even in the periodic case. But of course, I mean I I, I haven't tried this, and I I'm, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe I don't know. So, but it, I think it, this is what I would try to to look. Thanks very much. Ah, okay, so just let's uh, stop recording and then we go to uh, the non-recording uh, uh, session of uh, questions.